Steve here again doing a video on how I use SmartScore 64 Pro NE to accomplish my task of digitizing music. Um, SmartScore 64 is an excellent piece of software by Musitech and the link is attached. And what we're going to do in a series of videos here, this will be part one, is how I use SmartScore 64 to, to digitize my music. The example I'm going to use is from a piece of music that was done in the Civil War era. So it actually will bring forth a number of problems in the digitization. Of course, as we all know, digitizing anything, optical character recognition versus music character recognition is all dependent upon the quality of the thing that is being scanned. So why do I use SmartScore? Well, one reason is, of course, with, for failing eyes. And I happen to have an issue with failing eyesight. So I take music that is given to me that has been actually shrunk from its orchestral size, and I bring it into SmartScore, uh, digitize it, bring it into my notation software, and then actually make it larger so I can read it. And I'm also called upon from time to time to take a B-flat clarinet part and transpose it to an E-flat clarinet part. And I also tend to make play-along versions of clarinet ensembles uh, for people to practice to at various tempos. So let's go ahead and get started here. So now I have opened SmartScore. And let's go ahead and bring in a piece of music. Now what I'm going to actually show you is the original. So here's the original of Lorena, a very popular piece of music during the Civil War period of time. And we'll be working on digitizing this piece of music. So we browse files. We find Lorena. I've already saved it as a TIF file, but so let's open that. I've said this before. That what Lorena, that what SmartScore does is it takes the PDF and converts it into a TIFF file. And once you've saved the TIFF file, you can go ahead and open it up. So here we have Lorena. Let's go ahead and in the image editor, let's go ahead and click, click on the recognition button. I don't want text because often for my purposes, um, I don't need lyrics. Of course, you can do text and then um, bring that in as necessary. But for the purposes of this, we'll just go ahead and open Lorena. We can see three parts in seven systems, two parts found in two systems. And that's because at the end of Lorena, it's, they drop the voice part off and just have the piano part. So there would be two systems at the end open the SmartScore file. We don't need to unify key signatures at this point. Um, I'll go ahead and save it as Lorena to my downloads. And as you all know, probably I'm using a Macintosh running um, OS 14. Let's go ahead and blow it up to 200%. And I want to comment on the quick keys uh, for Zoom don't seem to work with OS 14, so I just click it at the bottom and bring it up. Okay, so here we are. First thing I want to comment on is that working inside of SmartScore, there are multiple ways to do anything. There's a host of quick keys, which can be accessed from the help men menu. By online help, you can actually find the keyboard shortcuts there. So there are keyboard shortcuts for many things, but these keyboard shortcuts are not the same as are frequently used in other mu music mutation software. So for someone like me at my age, it actually becomes very challenging to, um, to actually remember all the keyboard shortcuts, which make things simple or when you're doing this sort of work. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We can see that we got rests here. So here we are in the first hand of the piano. And the first thing we notice is we got some, some uh, reddish symbols here. 
If you go back here to the top under, by the way, we're in the note editor tab, we can see that that means that these have been entered in voice too. Well, that's not necessary. So we need to go ahead and remove those. Now in, in SmartScore, pressing X on the keyboard gives you an X and you can simply select and click X and remove them. Now the next thing we notice is that this quarter note is dotted. How do you dot a quarter note? Well, to get out of the X, that is the uh, delete, hit escape. That's always your get out of whatever you're doing. And it brings you back up here to the um, escape, which brings you to the, um, that's the select and that's the properties. So hit escape brings you back to where you can select things. Now you'll notice that the first measure, by the way, is yellow. And that's because the yellow means that there's not the correct number of beats. And you wouldn't expect it in a pickup. And maybe we'll come back to that. But okay, the first thing we notice here is that we need a dot uh, on this quarter note. Now, as I said, there's many ways to do a dot. First way is just to press D on your keyboard. And you get a dot. And you can add a dot by pressing D. I'm going to hit Escape. You can go over to the left-hand panel and press a dot. And look here, there's a dot. Press Escape. Clicking here brings up the symbol selection guide where everything that you want to do is able to be done by mouse. You can click on notes, click on a dot, and you get a dot. So that's way three. Way four is to click on the note while you've got the escape button pressed. Bring up the properties and add a dot. Okay? How you do it, your choice, whatever works best for you. The next thing you'll notice is that when they scanned this in, this dot actually became a staccato. If you hit X to delete, you can just go ahead and click, put your, put your X, click, and the dot and the staccato goes away. But you still need a dot No, we're good here. So let's go ahead, and the only thing we're missing now is an eighth note. Sorry, 16th note. So how do we add a 16th note? Well, once again, there's four ways. Go to the left, click a 16th note. Go to the right, in the symbol selection, click notes, click an eighth note. Third way is a keyboard shortcut which is reversed from Dorico, which is actually where two is a half note, three is a quarter note, four is an eighth note, five is a sixteenth note. Or the quickest way to do it is to hold down on Macintosh your command button, find a sixteenth note with your mouse, click it, And now you've got a 16th note. And now you can simply move it over and add it. Now when you do this, don't put it on top of the note or you'll change the note. Move it off to the side. And if it turns green, that means you're going to add it as another voice. You don't want that. So move it over here and click. Now having said that, let's go back up here to the, to the panels. Go to Tools. And let's make sure that we have auto beaming selected and auto spacing selected. And that's by default. And there we go. So back to note editor, escape button. And oh, by the way, change to voice one just to make sure that you're inputting those notes into voice one if that's what you want to do. All right, well, we see this slur mark sitting out here in the middle of nowhere because, in fact, it didn't pick up those race notes. So let's get rid of the slur because it's not sitting with anything. And let's go ahead and add our grace notes. Well, the simplest way to add grace notes is to go ahead and make sure your symbol selection is selected. Go to notes, click 16th notes, 
click grace notes go to here b a and there you go now this slur by the way is stuck into space make that go away with an with an x now if you want to beam these together o on your keyboard brings up the select button you can just go ahead and and select those two hit b and you've put them together now if you want to add the slurs there is no shortcut for slurs now by the way the most recently used things are here you can go to tool search select and it's not called slur it's called legato click on legato drag the notes drag the notes and there you go hit escape to get out of the legato tool okay so moving on to the next measure we can see that we're missing some notes it's yellow so we notice first of all that there is um, there need, this needs a dot and like I said there are many ways to do the dot I just 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 left click and add a dot that's as easy for me as anything else a dot a dot oh and we're missing a 16th note so we can add a 16th note either by many of the ways that we've talked about depending upon how quickly you remember so in my case I just I just press numeral 5 which is a, a 16th note and I had a 16th note okay hit escape we need a dot and there we have a dot now essentially we've cleaned up this first series of lines now moving over to here we'll see some other issues so let's just take them one at a time we see that we need a dot here so I'm gonna go ahead and just press D because to show you press a D and we're done we are missing a dot here so I got a dot there and it looks like we got all the dots so I'm gonna hit escape we've got the grace note correct there this is just hanging out into space so we'll click, click X make that go away we see here we're missing something what are we missing well we're missing a bar line huh how about that now the way you add a bar line is you can either command click on the bar line to pick it up and place it or you can click I you can hit I on the keyboard and find your bar line but we have a problem here because of the spacing if we put a we well we might be able to put a bar line here let's see what happens if we do ah see it pulled those things over so let's go ahead and control Z to get out of it and now we want to move these things over here so we can put the bar line there well how do we do that escape put our mouse inside the measure hit the shift button and we can start dragging things by a handle let's drag it over the I is we'll go ahead and click I and go ahead and put the bar line ah there we go okay now we got a problem here and we can actually see that hanging out is a little dot there so let's click the eighth note take away the dot and there we go now you'll notice that it looks like these two D's are connected this is a common problem inside of scan uh, smart smart score um, and it often will interpret a tie I'm sorry a slur as a tie so you want that to go away well how do you do that well in smart score on your keyboard if you press V you see a tie see how the little cursor changed to a tie V is a tie in smart score V 
is a tie. T in smart score is a triplet. So smart score, V for tie. If you hit V twice, you'll see it turns hatched. That means it's in delete mode. So start to so go make the note orange, click, and you'll notice the tie goes away. And as I said, if you want the legato, the slur, the slur to be over that group, you can go down to tool search, just click, press legato, drag, drag, click, and let go. Okay, now look here at this measure. They're different colors. What does that mean? That means that Smart Score has put them in different voices. Now, I have been unsuccessful in a Macintosh at changing um, voices, um, which we can do quite easily in other notation softwares. So let's just get rid of them, hitting X, clicking them. Then let's go ahead and put in a quarter rest and an eighth rest. I'm going to, to add rests, we can once again go over here. We can go here to notes. Or go to rests, sorry, and click the rests. Or we can do what I was saying, which is to command click, command left click, a quarter, pick it up, Put it there. Command click an eighth note rest, put it there. All right. And now we want to make this to be an end bar line. So going over here to the symbol selection, click on bar lines, end bar line, bring it over here and put it in place. So there you go. That's that's a start. Um, I think this will be the end of part one, and part two will pick up here where we actually have to do more complicated work in the bass, well, in the treble and bass cleft hands of the piano to make these chords um, function. Okay, thanks, folks. See you in part two.